to me. No walls he won't kick down. No wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. No shadows. No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. No walls he won't kick down. No wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, I never heard that song before. That's my first time hearing that song, but how many of us know it's true? God is relentless for us. I'm telling you, the God that we serve is relentless. You know, we, we know Jesus as the lamb but he's also the lion yeah. yeah he's ferociously opposed to what opposes us are you hearing what i'm saying he not sweet little baby jesus in the manger when it comes to coming against things that come against you you better know who's on your side you better know who's fighting for you right now jesus is doing war on your behalf your enemy is not winning those depressing thoughts are not winning. That doubt and discouragement is not winning. God is fighting for you right now. That's why he says, don't be weary in your well-doing. For in due season, you are going to reap. All you got to do is not give up. God is fighting right now for you. He is relentless for you. The Bible says, the Bible says that, that he's a jealous God. And he's not jealous like humans are jealous. Because human jealousy comes from a place of brokenness. It's a different type of jealous. It's a jealous that has zeal in it. I, I'm, I'm really zealous over you. I, I, I'm possessive over you. I, I bought you. I sent my son, Jesus Christ, because I loved you. I'm on your side, and I am anti anything that is anti you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ooh, I feel the Lord. I'm anti everything that is anti you. And the Bible says he will leave the 99 and go after the one. There's somebody in this room or watching via live stream. You need to know that you're not by yourself. You need to know that you are not forgotten. I feel God saying, I've got a strategy to deliver you. I've got a strategy to bring you up. I've got a strategy to manifest my purpose, my plan, and my pro I feel the Lord in this house. There is a strategy over your life right now to deliver you, to set you free, to break the yoke, and to bring you into everything that God has called for you. There's a strategy over you right now. Mara, bro, I feel the Spirit of God. There's a strategy. Yeah, 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 yeah. No shadow, I won't light up. Why? Because there's a strategy over that shadow. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. There's a strategy over my life. There's a strategy. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit in this house tonight. I'm in darkness, but there's a strategy. I'm in darkness, but God's not in darkness. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm winning, but my feelings are immaterial. I cannot trust my feelings. I have to bring my feelings under subjection to what I know. We're not feelings-driven people. The devil is a liar. We serve a God that is not manipulated by our feelings, and therefore we're not supposed to allow our feelings to manipulate our passion. It's a strategy. If you don't hear nothing else we say tonight, hear me, there's a strategy. There's a plan. God is a strategic God. He declares the end from the beginning. That's who he is. And everything that he does, he does 
in the context of strategy. God is not flipping a coin concerning your life. He's not, he hasn't flipped the coin concerning your future. He's not pulling straws and casting lots about your future. There's a strategic divine plan over your life that causes everything you face, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, to work together for good for those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. The plan is already in motion. That's why, that's why Kevin, he says, just don't give up. Your job in this thing is to stay alive. Your job in this thing is to not faint. Hello, somebody. Even when you want to faint, don't faint. There's more in you than you think. You still got some energy. You are feel the Lord. You still got some breath. You still got some power. You're not wiped out yet. If you were wiped out, you wouldn't be here. You're here in the filling station. God is getting ready to fill you up for this next leg of your journey. He's getting ready to wipe the tears from your eyes, the sweat off of your brow. You're getting ready to get your sword back in your hand, the word of God back in your mouth. You're getting ready to start winning because there's a strategy over your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. God is getting ready to break into your universe. He's getting ready to break into your situation. He's getting ready to kick some doors down. He's getting ready to bind some things. I open doors that no man can shut. I'll shut doors that no man can open. I'm a powerful God. Shall I speak it and it not come to pass? Shall I speak it and somebody eradicate what I've spoken? I am the great I am. What I decree must be established in the earth and the gates of hell themselves. Everything negative. I don't care if all of the negativity in the world came and knocked on your door. God says, I am He. And what I speak will come to pass. And He's for you. He's for you. He's not against you. He's for you. Creator of the universe, the master of all things, is for you. I feel the Lord. I, I feel like tonight is about war. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't come in feeling like that, but I... I feel like tonight is about war. Every once in a while, you got to put your little cute little Christian face on the back burner. And you have to remember who you are. you got to remember that greater is he who is in you for a reason. Hello, somebody. Every once in a while, you got to tap into the other part of being a believer. Yeah, what is that? We break yokes. What is that? We walk in power. What is that? We cast out devils. What is that? Even the devils that come against us. See, 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 sometimes casting out devils is not you casting the devil out of somebody else. Sometimes you casting out devils is to tell everything negative in your life where to go. Sometimes you got to tell everything negative in your life that is anti you to go to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I feel the spirit of war in this house. I feel the spirit of war in this house. God is fighting for us. Pushing back the darkness. Lighting up the kingdom. That cannot be shaken. Let me tell you something. Here is the truth, family. Here's the truth, family. It's more than just coming to church. If your spirituality, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. And I believe that's why the Lord has preserved me. And continues to increase me. 
I'm going to tell you what this thing is about. If you don't get past coming to church to be inspired, you're not going to be of the substance that you need to walk out the fullness of your calling. We got to get past that. I feel the Holy Spirit. We got to get past coming to church because we need a good word. And then, and then, here's the truth. And then spend the other six days and, and 21 hours living out our own dream. So it's like, not you, but it's like we steal a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of motivation from God's tank. And we bring it into our life so that we can have a productive week. That ain't what this thing is about, my brothers and sisters, and sons and daughters, friends and family. This thing is about becoming. All right. This thing is about you and I becoming like him. Where we walk in authority and purpose and power and passion and peace. Where the gates of hell cannot prevail. And I believe with all of my heart. See, here's what David said. David said, God, you teach my hands to war. You teach me how to war. I'm not talking about Krav Maga, Jiu Jitsu, or kickboxing and a boxer. All oh, that's wonderful. I, I, I dabble in it. But that ain't the war that I'm talking about. He, he says, he says, God, you teach my hands to war. I'm not just a warrior on the human battlefield, but I've learned how to take down every giant that stands in my way. I've learned how to take down every obstacle, every opposition. I've learned how to cast down every thought, every imagination, every hard thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I've learned how to navigate this industry. Hello, somebody. He teaches my hands to war. I've learned how to navigate L.A. Come on, somebody. Let's tell the truth. And I didn't learn how to navigate. I don't navigate L.A. by kissing every booty I feel like I need to kiss. Because the booty you kiss today will be all over the news tomorrow. Hello, somebody. Yeah, you just catch it. You catch that. I didn't, I didn't navigate L.A. by getting in the right rooms. I navigated L.A. because I hooked up with Jesus for real. I, I navigated L.A. Because, because Jesus became my best friend. And, and all of a sudden, his strategies became my strategies. And his favor became my favor. And his power became my power. And his plan became my my plan and his authority became my authority. God wants to teach your hands how to war. And sometimes, I'll be honest with you, like, sometimes you got to pick a fight with me in order to get me to fight. You track it with me? Sometimes, I'm, we're going to talk for a minute, but, but sometimes like, I'll get comfortable and I forget I'm in a fight. You ever been there before? I forgot my spirituality is a fight. I thought my spirituality was just my positivity. I thought it was just my wisdom. No, 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 no. It is a fight. My, my spirituality is to teach me how to bind what needs to be bound, how to loose what needs to be loosed so that I can lay hold of everything that is for me, for my children, for my children's children, how to lay hold everything that's for you. I feel the spirit of the Lord. Can we take a break on cute church just for a minute? Just for a minute. We'll do cute church maybe Sunday. But I think that when people come out Thursday night, it's the hungry crew. I feel like the Thursday night crew 
is the crew that say, God, I need something from you. I, I recognize that I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. I, I recognize that, that there is something special about me. And I need to feed from you in order to thrive in you. Some people in this room right now, you're in a fight. You're in a fight. And you think it's an attack. No, it's a fight. It's just a fight. It's a fight. You're in a fight. But the good news is in him, you've already won. Jesus already had the most brutal fight that anybody could ever have. And he overcame it. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord. I know this. I know it's all positive. Why is it being negative? Be quiet. Because you can be positive and depressed. You can be positive and bound up. You can be positive and have the demonic ruling your life. You know what's positive? What's positive is when you know you got the victory. What's, what's positive is when you've got the enemy under your foot. That's what's pov- positive. What's positive is when you overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony. That's what's positive. Are you tracking with me? I'm going to be, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. Because man, we're, we're in like a crazy moment. We're in a crazy moment. You know, I, you know, I've talked about before, if you've been here any length of time, i talked about, you know, when Jesus talked about what will be the sign of the times and the last days, all that kind of stuff. And I, I talked about wars, rumors of wars, all that kind of stuff. There's one thing that I didn't talk about that you should know. It says, in many false Christs, there'll be many false Christs. I never talked about that. Christ literally means anointing. The anointed one. So false Christ basically means false anointings. Can I talk to you in a real conversation? I love you too much not to keep back stuff that you're going to need. You don't harp on it. You just know it and you move accordingly. False Christ. That means that there's going to be a lot of people pretending. Hello. They're going to be pretending like they got it. And they might have the gift. They might have a gift. They may have an ability to draw or persuade. Hello, somebody. Because anybody can add that. You can nurture that. You can read books. It's interesting. There are a lot of books out there. Most of the books that are selling a lot. Well, not most, but a lot of the books that are selling right now are books about persuasion. That means that people are investing in resources to manipulate you. That's witchcraft. Best-selling books. Can we talk for a second? Have a real conversation for a second? Best-selling books right now in business are books about how to influence you. And so, and so you, you think that you're being drawn to an anointing, but you're really dr- being drawn to, to a spirit of manipulation that ultimately wants something from you. Y'all talk to you for real. It, it, it's coming down to that. Many, it says many false Christ, false anointings. And that's one of the things that God has been highlighting with me. And I've really been like, I honestly, just, uh, just, just transparency to you, my, my, my family. I've been shrinking my circle. Yeah. I've been... I've been shrinking it down, you know, like every once in a while. I remember when Instagram, like you, you would follow somebody. They did this a couple of years ago, but you would follow somebody and, and they would have like a million followers and Instagram would do this thing and they would have like 200,000. What did that mean? That meant that there were some fake stuff connected to them. And when the shaking came, it, it, it basically, come on somebody, it, it reconciled what was really connected Versus what was false, what was puffed up. And I wonder if maybe we ought to do that in our lives right now. Where we ought to look at things that we wanted to be Christ. I feel the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a lean season. 
It's a lean season. It's a lean, it's a lean, very lean, lean, lean season. Well, I believe you're going to have to cut off the fat. You have to cut the fat off. Because you don't have time to have anything connected to you, anything in you that ain't Christ. You understand what I mean? That, that ain't anointed. That's not anointed. Many false Christ. That means that in these days, I got to be careful. I, I, I got I to gotta watch who I listen to. I got to watch what I take in. And I got to watch who I take it in from. You have to be careful. I don't know. I, this was not planned. You have to be careful who you give authority in your life. And you have to know where to, you have to know how to protect your spirit from those that you submit to. For example, you, you might work in a place where you have to submit to somebody for work. But you do not submit your spirit and your soul to that person. You have to learn how to compartmentalize. You don't submit your mind or your thoughts. Because you don't know of what spirit they are. I want you to protect yourself. I want you to protect yourself. Mind, body, and spirit. This is a time for the pure. It's a time for purity. I feel God. Why am I? What, what is this? What's going on tonight? And there is, there is a connection between your purity and the power of your battle. Because, because even Jesus taught us that Satan can't cast out Satan. Darkness can't cast out darkness. That was Dr. King. Darkness can't drive out darkness. Mm. And also, you have to be careful who you partner with. Sometimes you can partner about a cause that you agree upon, but you don't know the spirit of the partner. I want to say that better. I got to say that better. I got to say that better. There, there, there are causes. You know, it's funny. So, so we led, you know, members of our church led this, this march called Hollywood Blackout a couple years ago. And I had never done that before. And I just think it was positive. It was peaceful. It was, we were lifting up our voice about some things that were taking place around the world as it relates to brutality. And, and so, I, and so they, they asked me, you know, one of the members, he might even be here tonight, but, but he asked me, he's like, you know, come and be I said, you know what, I will. And I came out to be a part of it, and it was crazy because we, there were thousands of us that descended down upon Hollywood Boulevard to lift up our voice. It was peaceful, right? But then there were other people in the crowd. And, and they were violent, and they were cantankerous, and they were argumentative, and they had their own agenda. So it seemed like we were together, but we weren't. It seemed like we were the same, but we weren't. I feel the spirit of God. I feel like a father right now. I feel like a father. And so, so sometimes the reason why we have to have, have, have our temperament and, and, and to be disciplined and, and patient is because we can emotionally, we can get emotionally charged and partner with something that ultimately, ultimately is anti-us. And what led us into it was our passion about something that was positive, but we didn't check the source before we cut covenant. And the next thing you know, we're, we're, we're thinking things that we have never thought before. And we're picking up on things that we were, you, you tracking with me? This is a time to have clear heads. Clear heads. And pure hearts. And clean hands so that you can fight. You can fight the real enemy. There's only one enemy. And lose somebody. There's only one. And he is not sitting in the White House. Hello, somebody. And that's not political. I don't know how you flow. But I'm saying we've only got one enemy. 
The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So when we fight, that's what we're fighting against. And we can't fight against it if we're in bed with it. Are you hearing me? Come on, L.A. Come on, L.A. I grew up here. I, I minister here. I work here. I pastor here. I know what's here. I want to do something that's, that's real, like, random, but I, I feel like doing it. If you're here, and I don't want you to worry about who's looking. I'm just going to pray. We're going to move on and see what God does tonight. I don't know what he's going to do. But if you're here and you say, Pastor, you're talking to me about my heart. I feel the Lord. You're talking to me about my heart. You're talking to me about my relationships. You're talking to me about partnerships. There's someone in this room right now and you feel like these words are going to save your life. I want you to get down to this altar right now. Right now. You feel like these words right here are going to save your life. Save your life. Jesus. 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. That song, <laughs> put those words back up there. That song. Oh, there's no wall. I put those words. That's my first time hearing this song. It's so prophetic. Get to, the, get to the hook, yeah. There's no shadow you won't light up. There's some in this room right now. God lit up a shadow, didn't he? He lit up a shadow. He says, I got you. I got you. No mountain that you won't climb up. Coming after me. Family, hear the heart of God. Hear the heart of God. He is coming after you. He loves you. You mean so much to him. You are so valuable to him. You're his. You're his.